Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Now while trying to create a culture of wildness from within civilization now there is a possibility that uh, we have been uh, uh, time and again uh, talking about uh, the organic farming so and so forth. Why is it that we are so much craving for this organic food? Because uh, in order to maximize the production, many of the farmers and agriculture practitioners are in a way engaged in using the chemicals and fertilizers to a large extent and in return it is causing a lot of uh, health problems to us and many of the anxieties and problems which we face today is uh, with the kind of consumption which we have. So therefore this sort of uh, a healthy relationship has to be maintained and this will perhaps add up to part of our civilization rather. Now, Nas Deep Ecology Movement uh, work was published in 1986 and is perhaps the best sought contemporary statement of this ecology position. So Nas point out that Deep Ecology Movement again is characterized by the environmental activism which is spiritual. Now why is it that uh, Nas is important in this domain of spiritualism? because only uh, human tends to be you know reset and then reform uh, through this idea of spirituality because what we believe we practice. So therefore if this idea of environmentalism is being inculcated in many of these uh, religious practices perhaps there is a chance and a possibility of uh, you know of forming some certain kind of uh, uh, ideas which might be helpful to the present or the current contemporary period. This spiritual activism against uh, again for Nas means that acting from the basis of this the fundamental or rudimentary philosophical if not religious ecosophy or a total view and acting non-violently. Now it is interesting to you know uh, uh, looked at again uh, when Nas bring about by being spiritual and to be non-violent. So I am sure uh, you might have uh, still remember when we talk about why non-violence or this so called ahimsa which was also widely uh, talked about in the Buddhist uh, uh, ethics or principles and uh, by being non-violent we are not talking about uh, being harmful to our fellow humans but also equally to other uh, species around us and, and this particular ideas again Nas borrowed as I said from Gandhi. Now the distinction between as we had discussed the shallow and deep ecology uh, was made way back in the 70s uh, and has now been uh, to some extent widely accepted as a very useful terminology to refer to the major division uh, within the contemporary environmental thought. Uh, because uh, deep ecology as I said emerges as against or counterpoise to uh, what shallow ecology believes. So perhaps it, it has in a way earned or been used uh, particularly by the uh, environmentalists if not uh, by the environmental activism. Now uh, again we will just quickly look at uh, some of the differences that it has posed against uh, the shallow ecology. Shallow ecology in a way is anthropocentric and as we have talked about uh, the American culture or idea is pretty much anthropocentric in nature. It views human as active or outside nature 
as the source of all value and ascribes only instrumental or use value to nature. So, nature is nothing but to commodify and to serve uh, the certain purpose of human that is we need to we have to sort of exploit and extract the uh, things which are important or necessary which 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 are sort of which has a commodificate or commodity value now deep ecology as i said does not separate humans from the natural environment does it separate anything from uh, it it does not see the world as a collection of isolated objects, but as a network of phenomena. Now, as, as we had discussed, deep ecology again recognizes the in, intrinsic values of all living beings and views human as just one particular strand. Nas characterized this shallow ecological movement as one that fights pollutions and resource depletion in order to preserve human health and affluence. See, uh, we were talking about this the idea of preservation of this wilderness movement, which served the purpose or the interest of the elites or those the have, while uh, which is again contradicting to the interest of you know the uh, not just the humans who are categorized as the have nots, uh, the commoners, but deep ecology, you know, tends to think beyond that. It 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 it, 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 it espouses the ecological movement, which operates out of a deep seated respect and even venerations for ways and forms of all life. And, and accords them an equal right to live and blues, which means it tends to you know uh, follow a very uh, holistic and wholesome approach, wherein every creature, every species has a place, and uh, it, it it does not simply you know blame or maybe tries to serve the wasted interest of any. Uh, entity. Now, as we talk about the so-called national parks and uh, what, what sort of interests uh, guide uh, the so-called conservationist. Now, way back in the seventies, these wilderness areas, or such as national parks, national wildlife refuges, and other protected areas, were still viewed primarily as recreational and scenic resources uh, not as ecological research reserve sorry until the 1980s these conservationists argued most frequently from uh, recreational if not including the aesthetic standpoint from the preservation of wilderness so there was sort of a shift uh, from the 70s to the 80s how these uh, from a primarily uh, recreational to uh, the ecological uh, values or reserves are being maintained. Now, this such uh, ideas of uh, conservation is ha has sort of or being guided by a strategic decision, which was sort of believed to be you know limited to only the amount of land and uh, which would receive uh, the wilderness area designation. So, therefore, this conservationists wanted uh, it to be the areas in which they enjoy most sort of hiking, camping, fishing, climbing and hunting or maybe certain kind of uh, a tourist spot. So, tourism in a way uh, for quite some time uh, is also uh, being guided by the interest of many corporates, uh, wherein it, it sort of you know uh, serve the purpose of the elites. Now, altogether, a different situation has been witnessed today, in, in, even in terms of this wilderness pres preservation movement, uh, because this new conservation movement has 
largely turn its back to the old concept of this wilderness as primarily a recreational resource. Now, what do they argue? This new conservation movement uh, argue that uh, they are primarily based in the idea of conservation biology and also they recognize the biological diversity as the fundamental value that is uh, again ecotourism. Ecotourism is uh, one of the brands of tourism wherein they strongly adhere to you know uh, conservation biodiversity conservation or rather they also focuses on uh, the sustainable livelihood of the communities who are in and around those uh, tourist spots or the tourist uh, scenic places. Now, therefore, this new conservation movement again is being guided by this idea of uh, sort of uh, related with this recreational resource. Now, there is this uh, movement uh, towards creating a culture of wildness from this contemporary civilization, which perhaps will move on and uh, establish to this uh, extent of uh, civilization. Now, the deep ecology philosophers uh, in a way sort of struggled and argues that they sort of tend to situate themselves between the green, green movement, the social ecologists and the eco families, which are also part of emerging realization that this could be tried. Now, deep ecological thinkers insist that the natural world has value in its own right, that the health of this natural system should be our first concern and this best serve the interests of human as well. That is, the nature comes first. Not, 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 not just uh, primarily the concern of human. Now, uh, there, there is some criticism which is again uh, seen in the context of this uh, the deep ecological movement. That is mostly from the thought world that uh, there is a sort of uh, a suspicion which is created. Uh, an extension of this idea of western domination and it is also uh, perceived to be a form of neo colonialism because they fear that people of the third world be pushed out of their homes to make more room for the spectacular animals which perhaps is partly seen even in the indian context today how uh, people are being driven out to make more spaces to uh, you know like conserving the tiger animals so and so forth. And, and some scholars have also expressed the opinion that deep ecology is uh, you know well suited only for the or serve the purpose of the rich nations that can afford the luxury of this was wilderness as habitat for wild species. So, which again is you know uh, the pretty even an example is seen from the safari in uh, the Africa, uh, <coughs> how uh, things are being you know utilized. Arninus argues that what we need today is a tremendous expansion of ecological thinking and uh, most native societies around the world and uh, three common have had three common characteristics that is they had an intimate conscious relationship with their place they were stable, sub sustainable culture and often lasting for thousands of years and they had rich ceremonial and ritual life. Now, therefore, uh, uh, deep ecology in a way attempts to accommodate the ideas of this, uh, the ways of life of these native societies. Therefore, he tends to, you know, an increasing urge for the expansion of this ecological thinking is needed. Now, for example, if you look at the Tucano Indians of Northwest Amazon Basin, guided by their summons, that is the priest, which is uh, responsible for you know conducting the ceremonies and rituals that prevent overhunting and overfishing, 
they view their universe or environment as a circuit of energy in which the entire cosmos participates. So therefore, this idea of uh, you know not simply conserving but to have a sustainable relationship with the environment uh, is to be seen in those native societies. And for instance, the traditional purpose of these seasonal festivals is also periodically uh, to revive the topocosm which is seen uh, in the Greek that is the Greek word topo that is for place and cosmos for the world. That is uh, all of this aspect of rituals perhaps serve to you know connect or to keep open the essential connect connections between ourselves that is what uh, is to be seen in the context of uh, Ness uh, deep ecological thinking if not uh, you know the ecological or self relation now as I said uh, Ness has to some extent borrowed from the ideas of Gandhi's environmental ethic that is if you look at many of the environmental movement in the Indian context beginning from the Chipko and then even to the Narmada Bachao Andalon that is save the Narmada movement of the present time many of the environmental activists have heavily uh, rely on Gandhi's technique of this non-violent protest or Satyagraha and they have drawn abundantly on Gandhi's polemic against heavy industrialization. So Gandhi was in a way a proponent of uh, simple in means and rich in ends or rather which is pretty much equate to be equate with Arnine's philosophy. So the environmentalists of today do not uh, merely claim that they are following the examples of Gandhi and rather they go on to argue that Gandhi himself foresaw this ecological crisis of modern industrial society. So for that matter uh, Gandhi as such does not claim himself to be environmentalist or maybe uh, talks about human ecology in general, but if you rather try to look at the kind of tools and ideas which he has spread out, we can in a way say that he was pretty much uh, foreseeing the kind of problems which we are encountering today. And uh, in, in some of the works like the Hinswarats way back in 1909, he has given some sort of an alternative perspective on development which tries to look at uh, the current mode of development is exploitative of man by man and of nature by man. So that sort of uh, exploitation does not limit to uh, the human themselves but also extended towards nature. So Gandhi's approach in a way help us to provide a greater uh, equity or distributive justice by promoting technology that is appropriate to basic needs. Now uh, he often times uh, propound this idea of Swadeshi that is the local self-reliance and use of local knowledge and resources in order to you know have a much more independent uh, living and uh, so Gandhi, Gandhi does not really you know uh, uh, support the idea of uh, relying on resources which is not available in the environment rather he strongly advised that one should limit or confine uh, to the resources one has at hand that is in the natural surroundings. Now this uh, nice systematization of this Gandhian ethics can be uh, looked at how this self relation presupposes you know a search for truth that is questioning not just the development or the policies or those ideas of uh, materialistic uh, uh, enslavement but rather to find certain kind of truths. So Ness deep ecology is not fundamentally about the value of nature per se, it is also about uh, that we are in a larger schema of things that is he notes the identification of the self with the self in terms that is used by uh, 
in, in, in the holy script of this Bhagavad Gita that is unity which is one and the source of deep ecological attitudes. Now this link between self-realization and Nas environmental philosophy can be clearly seen in his discussion of the connection between non-violence and self-realization in his analysis of the context of these Gandhian political ethics. As Ness notes for Gandhi, to realize God, so one needs to first realize the self and to realize the truth, the three expressions of the same development. So these are in a way interconnected. So I have uh, just uh, extended the discussion by adding some uh, bit of uh, uh, inputs from Gandhi because uh, Ness was also pretty much influenced and uh, he was sort of uh, drawing certain kind of inspiration from Gandhi's explanation of uh, not just non-violent but also of that uh, how one has to be self-reliant and then maintain certain kind of equity and justice in terms of one's relations with the natural environment. Now, uh, uh, perhaps you can just uh, refer this for a further understanding of uh, deep ecology and also be critical about the cellular ecology and uh, I will stop here.